Good morning children. Welcome back to today's class. In today's class we are going to discuss about voltaic cell. How to convert chemical energy into electrical energy. We all know about the law of conservation of energy. Energy can be converted from one form to another form but it can neither be created nor destroyed. So let us in this activity see the conversion of chemical energy into electrical energy. This was first introduced by an Italian scientist named Alessandro Volta who gave us the first practical source of such a conversion in the year 1790. His arrangement is known as the voltaic cell. Alessandro Volta invented this voltaic cell when two strips of different metals are dipped in an acid solution, an electric current begins to flow through the wire connecting the two strips. The solution of an acid or salt in water that is used in a cell is called electrolyte. Here we can see the setup of Alessandro Volta. In the setup, the voltaic cell consists of a container in which two plates one of copper and the other of pure zinc are immersed in dilute sulfuric acid. This dilute sulfuric acid is called as the electrolyte. The zinc rod and the copper rod are called as the electrodes. Here zinc rod is the negative terminal and copper acts as the positive terminal, the anode and the cathode. When two rods of zinc and copper which are called as the electrodes are dipped in a solution of dilute sulfuric acid which is the electrolyte here, there are chemical reactions within the system. It is these reactions that help us to get electrical energy from chemical energy. When we connect its two rods to a torch bulb using metal wires, a current flows and the bulb lights up. The voltaic cell can therefore act as a source of electric current or electrical energy. The dilute sulfuric acid here dissociates into hydrogen ions and negatively charged sulphate ions. Because of the movement of these positive and negative ions, the electricity is produced and it can be seen by the glow of the bulb. The copper plate and the zinc plate are externally connected to this bulb as shown in the figure. So here zinc loses electrons more readily than copper as it is more electropositive than copper. So each zinc atom loses two free electrons and hence gains two units of positive charge and because of the movement of these free ions the bulb glows. And hence we can say that the chemical energy is converted into electrical energy. This conversion is introduced by Alessandro Volta and this whole setup or the arrangement is called as the voltaic cell. I hope you understood this. In voltaic cell we have seen the conversion of chemical energy into electrical energy. Now is it possible for us to convert the electrical energy into chemical energy? The reverse process? Yes, it can be done and this was proved by a famous scientist called Michael Faraday, a well-known British experimental physicist. According to his experiment, he passed electricity through liquids that is called as the electrolyte in the year 1834. He observed interesting chemical changes taking place when electric current passes through an ionic solution. So the resulting effects are known as chemical effects of electric current. Michael Faraday called this phenomenon of passage of electricity through liquids as electrolysis because it causes chemical changes within the electrolyte. Electrolyte is nothing but the solution which through which electrolysis takes place. So Michael Faraday proved that electricity, when electricity is passed through a solution, chemical reactions can take place.
when an electric current passes through a metallic conductor with a solid or liquid we can observe certain usual heating effect of current then what happens when electric current passes through some solution liquids let us see the demonstration of electrolysis of water according to this experiment current is uh, we can see the setup here in the vessel in the container two graphite pencils are immersed in water tap water and this tap water consists of water as well as salt where the salt splits into ions and helps in the conductivity conductivity of the current now here the graphite pencils are immersed in the tap water and the two ends of these graphite rods are connected to the two terminals of the battery positive and negative when the battery is turned on electricity flows through the wire and through the graphite pencils and then it conducts electricity and we can see the splitting of ions in the tap water and here we uh, small gaseous bubbles are seen to be getting formed near the electrodes can we call this change as a chemical change yes of course a uh, british chemist william michelson showed that if electrodes were immersed in water and a steady current was passed through it bubbles of oxygen and hydrogen are produced the oxygen bubbles formed at the anode are connected to the positive terminal of the battery and hydrogen bubbles are formed on the other electrode called cathode which is connected to the negative terminal of the battery here we can see the chemical reactions taking place in the solution and they depend on two factors one is the electrode and the other one is the solution the chemical reactions depend on the electrodes and the solution what are the chemical reactions taking place at electrodes and within the solution we have three points here one is metals may get deposited on the electrode surface here we can see the metals can be deposited on the electrode surface anode and cathode or we can see the gaseous bubbles here being formed and the color of this blue color the solution can be changed so these three chemical reactions can take place when electricity is passed through a solution so this is all about the conduction of electricity in liquids or electrolysis of water so in the next class we will be uh, discussing about the applications of this electrolysis and please read the textbook thank you